Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're talking about the add-on Curves to Mesh. So Curves to Mesh is an add-on from Mark Kingsnorth, he's the great mind that brings us things like Flowify and it does some really cool things. With more than 4,000 of this add-on bought, let's have a look at just what it can do. As normal I've installed this already, I'm not going to talk through that process, I'm sure we know how to install add-ons, if not there's a link in the description to a Blender Basics video going through that. What I'm going to do is shift an A and I'm going to bring in a curve. You will notice I've got a lot of extra curve options here. If you don't have those, go to edit preferences, go to get extensions, type in extra and add extra curve objects here. Then go to add-ons and again extra, make sure extra curve objects is ticked and then save your preferences if it's not auto saving. Now we will talk about some of those extra curves, but for now we're just going to bring in a Bezier curve, and it's important to know that this works with Bezier curves. Let's rotate that round somewhere here, and let's just G and Y that off to the side. I'm going to Shift and D and bring another version of this in, and then we'll just select both of those, Shift and D, R, Z, and just bring that round somewhere so we've got four of them, because this works off four curves, or at least the first function we're going to talk about works off four curves. Now for this to work, once we've got this installed, we'll hit N and you'll notice we've got this Curves to Mesh option and we're starting with Surface to Mesh. You'll notice there are two other options giving us a total of three conversion options. You also select where this works on so you basically can put your curves into a different collection and it will only focus on those curves so you can make this as complex as you want it to be. So a really nice level of control there. For example, I'm going to make a new collection and we'll just call this test and I'm going to put these objects, these curves, into that test and we'll just get rid of that and say that we want this to work on test only. So if we've got any other curves, it won't affect those. Now, what we're going to do is click enable on the preview and that starts to show some things happening with our curves but it's not doing anything exciting. What we need to do is make a set of four, initially four, I'll come back to that, curves that are joined together. So all I'm going to do is select that curve, go into edit mode, select there, G and then hold down control to snap and we'll just snap it to that edge and then G control snap it to that edge. Then I'm going to go into this curve, I've used Alt and Q to just swap onto editing a different object. So that's a nice shortcut so you don't have to tab it in and out. G control and put that to there and then Alt and Q again to go into this one. G, control, and put it into that one, and suddenly it shows what we're doing. We have made, or we're going to make, a continuous mesh plane, or, well, flexed plane, for this series of four curves. How awesome is that? And what's great about this is if I come into this one, I can still select this, and let's G and move that around, and as soon as I let go, it recalculates where that's going to be. So I can manipulate these as I want to, which is really cool. So as opposed to something like bridge edge loops, which has to work on a series of edges, this will work on curves, which in many ways is really preferable if we want these nice flowing shapes. Do remember we can always, if we come to the curve pen, hit control and click there, and then start moving this around so we can add in more of these control points, and you'll notice this doesn't have a negative effect on this mesh. It's not getting confused. It's still nice and uniform. Let's just scale that in a bit. Now, what we can also do is affect how much geometry this is going to create. We've got the surface subdivisions, and I can put this up as much as I want. Okay, so that's across. So in the Y, in this instance, the down is in the X. Or we can just use curve resolutions, and that will work off whatever you've got the curve set to be. I really like this. This has a lot of potential. Now, the other thing that we can do is if we then click down here of Create Mesh, it will create our mesh, and if I just G and Y that across, you'll notice it keeps our original curves. So I can come here and click Enable Preview again, select, let's say, this one, go into Edit Mode, let's just G and move this around, rotate it a bit, and then we've got an entirely different curve. Let's scale that up that we can then use and then once again click create mesh and then G and then Y this across. This is so useful if we want to do something, let's click on this curve, let's S and Y that in, select this curve, 
go into edit mode and then G and control again and then this one and G and control again so now if we're making something like a really cool flowing cape let's maybe change this one here so alt and Q and then we'll select that bit there and then G and bring that in so this could be a nice cool flowing cape click enable and we've got our cape so if we're doing something like loincloths capes flags this is so cool for giving us that extra level of control now just to mention another add-on from mark kingsnorth which i mentioned earlier if we've got something like flowify note that i haven't subdivided this yet so it's not particularly smooth but if i want to flowify i can create a source grid from this that's g and y that across and so i want to put some sort of icon on this I'm just going to bring up my asset browser. Where do I have those icons that I've got? There we go. And let's bring in this. So let's say, oh, that's rather massive. So let's scale that down. Rotate that on the Z by 90. Bring that into somewhere here. And then G and then Z that up. We can start, oh, that's really not centered. We can start using Flowify. And because this is made of a grid... Okay, we can very easily just flowify this. There we go, onto here, bam, done. And it's distorted the way it should be on this surface. And we can obviously, because it's flowify, move this around as we choose to, so I can put this where I want it to be. God, I love flowify, it's awesome. So we've got that as an option. I will say I probably should actually have broken this up first. So let's just use hard ops, mesh tools, dice that, in that direction let's go there and then q and then mesh tools and then dice and then do that somewhere there and then this will give a better result so there we go flurify there and then there okay so anyway a little bit segmented at this point because we haven't subdivided this and this there's a video on flurify if you want to check it out i'll put a link to that in the description so either way let's just uh get rid of that so join that down and we'll create the mesh and you can see what I mean by this cape. So like I love this. This is so cool. Even if it was just that it could do this, I'd be really happy with it. But it can do so much more. Oh, one other thing that I nearly forgot to mention for this is this doesn't just have to work on four. Let's just move that along and we'll probably go back to this being a bit scaled up again. So say we do the same thing again, let's enable this. This doesn't just have to work off of four bevels, but it does need to work off a grid. So let's just select those three there, Shift and D, and Y that across to somewhere here. Let's go into this one and edit it. Select here, G, Control, and connect it to there. Then this one, G, control, and put it to there. And suddenly it's now working off of more of them. And we could make this as complex as we wanted. We could go into select all of those, shift and D, and then bring that along in the X direction. And then we'll just need to join these up again. So let's select here. So G, control to snap. This one there, G, control to snap. And then you'll notice it's automatically populating this. And then here, G, control and snap. So we can make this as complex as we want it to be and then create mesh and we've got that working again. So again, lots and lots of options with this. And if we have a look at a file that comes with this, you can see that they've done this with a car and you can see just how much they've done with this. But actually, this isn't that many curves here in the long run. And if we were using something like a 3D scan, this could be quite an easy way to get a nice flowing object. You'll also notice we've got on here a mirror modifier, so you don't have to do both sides of this. Let's click enable to see what this looks like, and you can see what we're getting here. Click create mesh, and we've got, that's G and X that across, our car shape. Now obviously, let's shade that flat, we're going to want to go in and add some more detail here, and we would do that in the normal way with Blender. We're not going to try and play around with these curves to an insane extent. It's just not worth it. We use it to do the base shape and then work off of it. And then taking this even further, they've made a head. Like, again, this is just a demonstration of what it can do. I don't think anyone's really suggesting that we create heads using curves, but it is a really nice demonstration of just how powerful this could be as a tool for making these undulated or smooth objects. So let's have a look at some of the other options we've got here. 
So what I'm going to do now is bring in a couple of other Bezier curves. Let's just R and X that again by 90. Let's move that to the side and then we'll do the same thing again. Let's just Shift and D here and then let's come into edit mode and we'll just move these around. So let's rotate that around somewhere here. Okay, so the other option we've got is our profiles to mesh. So if I click Profiles to Mesh and Enable, you can see now we're doing a similar thing, but this is going to join everything together in a flat way. So it's not got the other curves on each edge doing things to add to this. But what we can importantly do is if I Shift and D and then bring that along to here, you'll notice that it will start adding to it. So we can just make a series of curved objects that we then create a profile for. We can modify the profile shape if we want to, so we can do things where it flexes in and out, which can be really fun to create cool shapes. I'm going to put that back to zero, and then we're going to create that mesh, and we've got our mesh going. Let's just G that over to the side, and you can see what we've done. Great, another way of using this, this is really fun. And we can do much more with it if you just go to your curves, and we've got our extra curves here. For example, I want to use curved spirals, let's say. Let's get an Archimedean one. Let's bring the growth in so we get this really cool sort of spiral shape but importantly we need to do this as a bezier curve i mentioned this earlier this works on bezier curves so let's just click that and then i can go back into object mode shift and d z that up s to scale that one up or something like that shift and d bring another one up let's rotate that round a little bit and then we can do exactly the same thing enable and then we're going to create the mesh and we've got this really cool spirally funky shape thing. Oh, I will say, I don't think I put enough subdivisions on it there. It wasn't particularly good. So let's enable that again. And because we've got that enabled, we can see that. So let's just add our curve subdivisions to make that much smoother. And then we'll just go back down and we'll apply this again. And we won't have that horrible shape. So there we go, really cool. Let's G and move that across. And if we want to, we can come in for let's say this edge which isn't too nice and control and X that out and then maybe control and two to add a subdivision on it and we get this nice smooth shape like there's so much potential for this I think it's really cool so let's have a look at the last one then which is sweep to mesh now this is very similar to profiles to mesh except for you're going to give it a curve to work along so let's just do the classic one which is to bring in a circle because it's a bit more complicated and then let's shift and then we'll bring in i don't know another circle let's r and y and 90 scale that down a bit and then g and y and bring that over and then let's shift and d and then y and bring one over there okay so we've got two circles now let's shift a curve and let's bring in some of our other cool curve profiles We'll do a cogwheel. Everyone always uses a cogwheel to demo this because I think it's quite a cool shape. We'll go to Bezier, Vector, okay, but it's still Bezier. So that's going to be no problem at all. We want it in 3D, but the Bezier is the important bit. Let's go into object mode, R, and then X, and then 90. Let's scale that down a bit, G, and then X. And we want to make sure that this is sort of on the circle because this is what this is going to flow across. Shift and D, and then X. Bring that over here so we're going to have a circle that goes to the cogwheel that goes to a circle that goes to a cogwheel that goes back to a circle now for this to work we need to tell it to work around this curve let's go sweep to mesh we're going to tell it to work off of that curve there and then we're going to go to enable and it's going to show us what we're doing and it's going to be a bit of a mess and why is it a bit of a mess well it's a bit of a mess because some of our objects haven't been rotated around they sort of have a flow direction so how are we going to fix that? Let's disable that. And all we're going to do is R and Z, 180, that one round. Let's have a look at it again. And we're getting a little bit better. So now we've only got a problem on this one. So R, Z, 180, and then enable. And you can see that's now working perfectly. So there is something to think about in terms of direction. So make sure that you do that as you go. And if this looks a bit weird, that's probably why. We can have a load of subdivisions. That's still pretty high. Let's click Create Mesh and then come out of Object Mode and we've got this really cool shape where we're flowing from a circle to that really weird cogwheel shape and back again. So this is a really fun add-on. I'm just going to show this with the Bezier curves because no one ever seems to show it with the Bezier curves. So I think that's really important. Let's go into Edit Mode. 
Let's R X90 round. So we've got that. Let's move that so it's a little bit more of an interesting shape. So we've got this here. Then we're going to do what we did the first time of bringing a Bezier curve. Let's rotate it on the Z by 90. Let's bring that somewhere here. Let's scale that up a bit. Get that onto approximately this edge. Rotate it round. And then let's just Shift and D to duplicate it. And then we can manipulate this to change it a bit. So let's go into edit mode. Let's rotate that round. And let's rotate that one around as well. So we've got these working here. Let's actually move that along a bit so it's kind of closer to the end of this. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing. This time we want it to work off of this curve here. And then we're going to click enable. And you can see like our profile to mesh, this is working from one to the other, but now it's going to work along that Bezier curve that we've selected to make a nice undulating shape instead of it being flat edged. So again, another way of controlling this. And again, this could be a great way of doing a cape or a loin cloth. Let's just scale that in a bit to say that this was going to be a loin cloth. And we'll just do that one more time. Enable, create mesh, G. And there we go, we've got our loincloth really nice and flowing. And again, we can use Fleur file on this because these are all quads. I think this is absolutely fantastic. And then I think this is a really good starting point, as I said, for those curves, those banners, especially combined with Fleurify. And I think a lot of people will find manipulating these curves around things maybe a little bit more convenient than trying to manipulate a mesh when this is going to give this nice, smooth overall appearance. If you are interested in that add-on, there is a link to it in the description. It's an affiliate link, which means it costs you no more to use it, but it does help support the channel and give me the time to create this Blender content. So if you were to use that, it'd be hugely appreciated if that is something that interests you. Other ways to help out would just be to hit that like button or to comment just to get the YouTube algorithm going, and that's always really appreciated as well. Hopefully you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day guys.